Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Tewksbury Congregational Church in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. As we get started this morning, uh, we invite you, if you're watching us on our Facebook Live feed in particular, to begin to submit your prayer requests through the comments, and we will share some of those joys and concerns a little bit later in the service. Our resident of Tewksbury, if you are feeling any uh, food insecurity at this time, we invite you to uh, take advantage of the Tewksbury Food Pantry that has uh, st stock and supplies for those purposes. Uh, those of you who are part of our church community and family, please be watching for information regarding a business meeting that will take place in a couple of weeks. Our leadership will be uh, calling around and we will be providing more information about that. Uh, particularly next week. The meeting itself is two weeks from today. And so, as always, our prayers are with all of you who are struggling either with the virus directly or have a friend or a loved one or who yourself are just coping with the disruptions uh, in life and the isolation that come with that. So our prayers continue to be with and for all of you. And so now, uh, apart from each other but together with God, let us be in the spirit of worship. Good morning, and welcome to you all that are here today, our Holy Ghost crew, and also to all of you out on the cloud. It's a blessing to be with you this morning. It's a blessing to worship God as we continue to trek through the Easter season. Now, let us begin our worship together by celebrating and joining in the call to worship. Come and hear all you who fear God, and we will tell what God has done for us. God is the sovereign of heaven and earth, maker of each world and all within it. God has given to all mortals life and breath and every blessing. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to those out in the cloud. Our opening hymn today is hymn number 149. It's called God the Spirit, Guide and Guardian. And for those of you at home, if you'd like to join in singing with us, pull up your your song sheet, and, uh, and let's begin.
And now let us all pray together. Source of all creation, maker of the world and everything in it, you are never far from each one of us. We come into your house seeking you, O giver of life and breath. Reveal yourself to us, dwell with us, and abide in us. We live because of you. We hope because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live, in the spirit of truth, who abides in us. Amen. And now let us pray once more the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. children gather around your TVs come real close to see me a little bit better all right okay I understand that TV uh, adds about 20 pounds to us so I want you to send me a text or a message and let me know if that's true but anyway I want to talk about love love say love, love. all right uh, you know do you love things in your life? Do you love certain foods? I bet you do. There's a lot of foods that I like. Uh, there's a lot of things that I love to do. Uh, believe it or not, I love to cut grass. Can you believe that? Who in here, the Holy, the Holy, uh, uh, excuse me, Holy Ghost crew, how many of, of you in here love to cut grass? We got one hand. I love to do it. It's a stress reliever. I get out. I sweat a little bit. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's all kinds of things I love to do. I'm sure all of you out there love to study. How many of you love to study here? How many of you adults out there love to study? Christopher is the only one that raised his hand here. <laughs> And, and I'm sure all of you out there are, are wonderful children. God bless you. You raise your hand because you love to study. It's important, so make sure you do it. Um, it's very simple today. Uh, I just want to say that God loves you. Uh, agape love. Agape. This is a kind of an infinite uh, grace-filled love for you. And, and, and God is always reaching out. And, and God wants you to know that you're loved. And, and we know this today. We know this through the teachings of Jesus Christ that we read in God's holy word. Uh, we know this from the Old Testament because we see how much God loves his people there. And we know it because of the Holy Spirit, the advocate. Uh, what is the Holy Spirit? Oh my gosh, I've, I have heard so many intricate ways to describe the Holy Spirit. But, uh, you know, I, I want to keep it simple here today. The Holy Spirit is the truth and the life. Truth is important and life is important. Uh, the Holy Spirit is all about our relationship with God. And also, we will never be orphaned and we will never be left alone. Uh, that's good to know, especially in times there's a lot of lonely people out there uh, because of what's going on with the pandemic. So, uh, God has never left our side. So, the Holy Spirit, to me that's simple, Right? God wants you to know that you're loved. God wants you to know that God is always close by and near you. Uh, if you ever feel like you're unloved, give me a call. I want to give you a pep talk. Say, God loves you. God loves you. All right, let us pray. 
Great and wonderful God, thank you for the power of love. It's something that you, you give us. We know this through Jesus Christ and we feel it today through the Holy Spirit. So Lord, let us celebrate that love and, and let our children know that they're always loved. Even when they feel in love by many around them, you're always there by their side to let them know that they are loved. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. So I'm here on behalf of the Board of Ministries um, to talk a little bit about um, a bit of an initiative we're hoping to get going. Um, as we all know, we're living in unprecedented times, things we haven't seen in 100 years with this global pandemic. We are closing in on 100,000 Americans that have succumbed to this virus. 40 million people or more are claiming unemployment. Um, people are in various stages of isolation. They're often feeling scared. And if you spend any time on Facebook, angry. Um, it can be very, very dark right now. But um, we're blessed to be people of good news and people of light. Um, under Laura's leadership a few years ago, the Board of Ministries came to our current visioning statement, connecting and serving all through God's love. But in this time, we need to be, our ministries need to be different. We can't just have a potluck supper to get people together. Things have to be different. So our, the Board of Ministries is now challenging ourselves, the other boards, the other committees, our members, and our friends to not only continue to serve others, because we know they are. We all have heard recently of the, the wonderful ministry with the prayer shawls and people bringing food to those that are homebound. But not only to continue to do that, but also to share what they are doing. We need more stories of light and sharing. <clears throat> for a while I served as the uh, youth choir director here for about 12 years. I like to say the interim choir director for 12 years. Um, and as Lucinda can attest, you always have a few favorite um, songs 
And I would make the kids sing this particular song almost every year, whether they liked it or not. I didn't really care. Um, and it was, it was this little light of mine. But it wasn't the sort of standard version. It had a nice, um, very slow start to it, um, very quiet. Um, and I would often ask one of my older choir members, maybe Jenny or Olivia, uh, or Jenna or Jackie back, back in, way back, um, I would ask one of them to take that first part as a solo, very quiet. But then it would, it would jump into a very joyful, exuberant, almost jazz hands type part. So right now we're challenged to share our light. It can be quiet and, and soft, the way that piece would start. Or it can be with that childlike, joyful exuberance. Um, so we'd like you to not only continue to share your light, but to share how you're doing that. So if, when we're doing the prayer request today on Facebook, put your comments in about how you or somebody you know has helped somebody. How have they served God? How have they served their, their fellow um, uh, people? Because we need more of that. And the Board of Ministries would like to challenge, like I said, not only us, not only the other members of our boards and committees, but all of us to do a better job of sharing the light and sharing those positive stories. So please get them up on the, on the feed now. Thank you. Good morning, once again. That's actually one of my favorite songs as well. I have some great memories surrounding uh, that particular piece. Uh, the scripture reading today is from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. But first, let us pray. When Jesus left the disciples, he gave us a promise. I will not leave you orphaned, for we, his disciples, live in him and he in us. The presence of God within and around all. What a promise. Take courage, take comfort. Blessed be God. And help us to understand your word today, O oh God. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And, if, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will also live. On that day you will know me and know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Chris, for the reading of God's holy word. I want to brag about something that we've been waiting for here in New England and Massachusetts. And I want to say thank you, God, for the very nice weather we have had. How many of you in your quarantine have made it out to the yard just to sit there and just enjoy the sun? Uh, you know, uh, uh, the other day we, we had a thunderstorm. We were actually in a severe thunderstorm warning. And we had some high wind, which is, which is normal around here. And uh, it blew up. Uh, the petals from the flowers off the apple tree in, in my backyard and it just covered the ground and I was thinking uh, how beautiful is God's creation uh, the next day I got my lawnmower out and went over it and kind of got the petals off of it but I was thinking how beautiful is this so I thank God for the, the great weather we got a few more days of some chilly weather and then I think summertime is finally here Sue is Dave getting your pool ready open all right, I'm sure the temperature of the water will raise from 45 degrees real soon and, and go up. Uh, July, it, it'll be, it'll be, it, all right, we'll, we'll pray for the sun to bear down on, on, your, uh, on your pool. 
But uh, welcome to you out there in the cloud. We are here to, to worship God. Uh, you know, um, uh, we talked about this uh, uh, either last week or the week before. Uh, the days are kind of running together for me. I don't know about you. But uh, we, we talked about uh, home churches. And, and the early Christians would often meet in their homes and worship God. So, hey, you get to take part in this great tradition. I know you want to be here, but celebrate that you're able to worship there or wherever you are. Did you know you can worship everywhere? Say everywhere. Everywhere, Wherever you are. Uh, Walking through the market basket, walking through Hannaford's, walking down your yard, walking down the street, watch out for the cars. Uh, You can worship everywhere. Praise be to God. This passage that uh, Christopher read uh, for us from, from John. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful passage of love, of tenderness that Jesus is sharing with his disciples. The, the people that were with him in, in ministry, uh, that surrounded him, that were listening to his teachings. Uh, they saw the miracles. They heard the words of grace. They were learning, although they didn't quite get it at the time. And now Jesus was saying farewell. Now we are here in the Easter season where we are celebrating the resurrection in the empty tomb still. So why are we talking about farewells and goodbyes? It's because of the Holy Spirit or something we've been saying recently here. We have gone old school. We're saying Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is our beautiful advocate of love, of grace, and we know that spirit. Let me get back to that here in a second. Say goodbye. Goodbye. All right, see you. I'm going to go home. (laughs) You didn't get get enough for your dollar today, did you, if I just walked out? Uh, (laughs) But... uh, you know, a farewell is a goodbye. And, and, and goodbyes are hard, aren't they? Oh, they, they can be brutal. Some are, not that, some are not that bad. Maybe you were in a relationship with somebody that didn't work out. And it came to an end and you made that decision to walk away. And you go, goodbye. That's a good goodbye, isn't it? You might grieve a little bit, but you're like, goodbye, it's over. Maybe you said good riddance. I don't know. Am I being mean up here today? But goodbyes can be tough. I remember a friend of mine, Charles. Uh, he was kind of the OCD kind of guy. Anybody out there OCD, everything has to be in the perfect place and all that. That is not me. Go look in my office right now. He had to have everything in line. Every dot cross, every T, whatever, however you say that phrase. And he wanted to prepare everybody for his departure when he would pass and he was getting owed. So he had this nice will. Uh, he, he, he had all these things. He was teaching his grandchildren and, and reminding his children. He was making sure his wife, uh, diet was taken care of. Oh my gosh, you want to talk about dying with dignity. That, that is a beautiful thing. I, I want you to consider that, everybody. Uh, uh, have everything in line. You will bless your family uh, during their grief and as they move on. And it came that time where the ultimate farewell was going to happen as he was in the ICU and it wasn't going well. His eyes was closed and, you know, his breath was shallow. And everybody was in there and I was there and I got to witness this. I I drove five hours from seminary to be there uh, with the family. And he refused to pass. His youngest granddaughter was not there. The end of the farewell had not happened yet. It was two minutes to spare. She walked in and went up and gave him a kiss on the cheek and said, Goodbye, granddaddy. And it was like a few seconds and he expired. There's this beautiful glow in the room. I can't describe it. They were singing hymns of the verses they remembered. It was a beautiful farewell and goodbye. And this farewell 
It was a good buy, but was it really a good buy? Good buys can be two things. Maybe saying goodbye to this, but welcoming something else. Aha. Maybe you said, said goodbye to your life before Christ. For those of you you have grew up in the church, maybe you have said goodbye to a lot of things as, as God has sanctified you. Goodbyes are a part of life. Sometimes we say goodbye to a job, like it or not. Sometimes we say goodbye to family as they travel home across country. There's a lot of goodbyes. This goodbye was going to be the beginning of something new that would manifest not too long from this, after the crucifixion and after the resurrection, it would be the beautiful gift of the Holy Spirit. We're going to celebrate Pentecost in two weeks. But before then, the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples. Jesus breathed it upon them, symbolic of Him giving them the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is important. The Holy Spirit does these things, as I shared with the children earlier. Truth. Say truth. truth. Oh boy. That truth. Truth is good, isn't it? Jesus shared the truth with us. We need to know the truth about the world around us. We need to know the truth about ourselves, which is often hard. The Holy Spirit helps us see these. It's like the lenses of God. Uh, who in here? Uh, we got a few people that wear glasses. You take off your glasses. Can you see a thing? I will run into you. It will not be good. You do not want to see me without glasses. I had a friend of mine who actually refused to wear glasses and still drive. It was scary. Whenever I saw him going down the road, I swerved way over. But the Holy Spirit helps us see the truth. And we know the truth because Jesus taught us the truth as we read in the Gospels. You know, the truth and the life. Say life. Life is more than just kind of living and getting by. Life, life is to be abundant. Say abundant. Uh, you know, uh, if there's anything we need to be reminded of today by the Holy Spirit, it's that life is important, is to be lived and embellished. Uh, there are so many things going on, as Bruce pointed out earlier, as he was sharing in, a, in our ministry moment, that, uh, uh, again, life is precious. And, and we want to know about the life-giving things that you are doing out there so we can celebrate. There, there's too many of these, uh, these gloomy stories out there. And, and no, we're not trying to, to run away from what's happening. But uh, the, the goodness of people is shining through all of this, isn't it? It, it really is. I don't know if you know this out there, but we had to self-quarantine for a few days because we were potentially exposed to the virus. And a church member, and I won't say her name, and I won't say the name of her husband, but they came and put some food on our front porch. A blessing to us. And we were let go of that. We were able to go to the markets ourselves. But these things are happening out there. I know some of you, you haven't told me, you're going out there and you are helping people with food, you're picking up prescriptions. I know there are some of you working at our local food bank and I really want to harp on that. Please take advantage of this resource. There are so many that are living in food insecurity. We had a gentleman show up at our steps this morning that needs help with food. And we're going to help him. I'm also going to tell him about the food bank. I'm going to say, please go, sir. So you can support your family. You know, things like this that are happening out there that we need to celebrate. Uh, little things that you're doing that make the biggest difference. And uh, why is all this happening? Because you've been inspired by the Holy Spirit. You have. The Holy Spirit, we know it as Jesus says. Why? Because, because Jesus so, showed us everything that the Holy Spirit does. Say does. That's what he meant. You know, the disciples were probably sitting there saying, oh, okay, what in the world is he talking about? You know, when Jesus would depart in the, in the sin, and we're going to celebrate that very soon. A week from now, Christopher, is that? When Jesus ascends to heaven? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. All right, you ready for that? So Jesus wanted the disciples to know that they weren't alone. 
Because I don't know about you, sometimes when you got this great teacher and they're not there, you're like, "Uh uh-oh, I have forgotten it all. And I don't know if I can go forward from what I've been taught. I don't know if this stuff can really happen. I don't know if I can apply this. So Jesus was going to take care of that with the Holy Spirit. And I know a lot of you out there have had a lot of great teachers, right? Great teachers. And you learned a lot from them. You know, I had this great calculus teacher in uh, high school. And uh, you know what? I was able to go off to work on my undergrad. And I was, because of her great tutorage, I I never really studied. And I was able to pass with C's. Yes, you can laugh. It wasn't her fault that I didn't go off and and study uh, that hard early on in my career at college. But the thing about great teachers, they stay with us. Say stay with us. Don't they? You, you remember teachers from high school, from college. Maybe you went on uh, uh, beyond your, uh, your, uh, your undergraduate. Uh, some of you who have gone into the trades that, that are just as important. You had teachers that taught you how to do that. And, and that sticks with you. And you're going to use this for the rest of your life. Jesus taught this. The Holy Spirit inspires us and helps us to remember that. So we can live abundant life. So we can live in the truth. And this is because of relationship. And uh, the, the Holy Spirit, uh, we're in relationship with this. Say relationship. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's something that we're in relationship with every day. Now, let me, let me tell you about this, this, this uh, Holy Spirit. Now, it isn't all lovey-dovey, is it? Oh, no. Sometimes we, we go stray or do something, go down the, the wrong path. And you ever hear that Holy Spirit talking to you saying, Oh, oh, nope, 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 nope. This is not you. You're a new creation. And I, I want all of us that participate on Facebook, including myself, to be reminded of that. <laughs> because I've been trying to win every debate lately. Oh, boy. Oh boy, I just have to jump in there. I love a good debate, but a lot of times you can't win that debate. Holy Spirit, please help me with that. It was a farewell. It was a goodbye. But what kind of goodbye was it? It was a goodbye to something new. The power of the Holy Spirit, these disciples and those that would learn from them they would be able to carry on the teachings of Jesus Christ. The teachings would not go away. If they had gone away, we would not be here in the year 2020. The Holy Spirit is with us and all around us. And so many miracles are still happening here today. We have not been orphaned by God. You may feel it today. But we have not. The Holy Spirit reminds us of abundant life. It reminds us that God is always with us. And we are never, ever, ever alone. And we know that God loves us all. So thank you, Holy Spirit. We're going to celebrate the Holy Spirit every day of our lives, aren't we? And we're going to celebrate when the Holy Spirit came upon the world at Pentecost here in two weeks. Praise be to God. I get to wear my red stole. (laughs) I love that stole. I love both of them that I have. So carry on. And know that the Holy Spirit is guiding you in all things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of Ghost, whatever you call it, is fine with me. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 330. It's called, Come Down, O Love Divine. It's a little unfamiliar to us, so Lucinda is going to play it through and then we'll all sing together.
Thank you, Kathy. And now we come to our time of prayer, as we do every Sunday. We also come to our time of celebration. Um, uh, please note, uh, we, we have a list of uh, prayer concerns on our prayer, prayer list weekly. Uh, if you're not getting that information via email, uh, please let us know. Send Mercy uh, an email, and we'll make sure that you get that. So we're praying for all those on our prayer list. And uh, do we have any new prayer requests today? Yes, Debbie. Uh, Melissa is praying for a good friend's husband who has COVID and his family is going to get tested. Um, she also wants to let us know that her father is back 100%, so praises for that. Um, Kim wants to pray for all first responders in the medical field um, dealing with COVID and may they feel God's love and get some uh, much deserved rest. And God bless everyone. Um, Carolyn wants to pray for a coworker's husband that passed away this week from COVID. Um, Alex had been working at the Newton Wellesley Hospital for 22 years. Pam has prayers of celebration and gratitude for um, her friend Rose's father, who has been taken off a ventilator and getting back to good health. Um, Tina has prayers for her niece Danny, who is ready to give birth to her second child any day. Carrie wants prayers for her godmother because her godfather passed away last week and she's going through early stages of dementia. Jojo has uh, praises for her TCC family members that have uh, shopped for her <laughs> and um, because in her family because she can't go out in her health. Um, Sue has praises of celebration for the Holy Ghost crew. Um, who have worked to provide us with the light they need, um, from writing the services to rehearsing songs, singing them, um, reaching out to the community. Um, so praises to that. Um, prayers for my brother-in-law who had a heart attack and is recovering um, in the hospital now. And a couple of things to consider for those that, um, in response to the ministry moment, um, there's the folks in the community that are painting rocks with inspirational messages and, and placing them on trails. Uh, people donating to the food pantry, um, birthday parades, food shopping, making masks, delivering wine to strangers. <laughs> Donna has a, a prayer request for her neighbor, James. Um, he's at Beth Israel Hospital with esophageal cancer. And as they celebrate the successful fourth surgery that he's had, they realize it's a really long road ahead. So prayers for healing and peace, especially for his wife and family who can't be with him and visit him right now. Um, Russ has a prayer for his cousin Bill and his wife Marie, who lost their adult son Tom last night to a drug overdose. And they find comfort knowing that he's now at peace. Thank you for your prayer requests and celebrations. And Christopher, you have a request? Uh, prayers. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah pray prayers on the occasion of the uh, passing of our former interim pastor this, earlier this week. Uh, the Reverend Marilyn Rosier died on Tuesday. She had served uh, from 1998 to 2000 and actually went on to be an associate conference minister for a little bit. Thank you, Christopher. And Kate wanted prayers for a friend who gave birth to her daughter and lost her own mother on the same day. All right. Thank you for that request. Any more requests? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. you for this beautiful day of worship you have given to us. I thank you for every soul out there that you love and you take care of. I thank you for the beauty of creation. I thank you for all things that you send to us from heaven above. 
Almighty God, I want to lift up our celebrations here today. There are so many people that are responding to your call to go out and to love their neighbor, to help their families during this trying time of the pandemic. Thank you for the blessing that they are to those that they help. Thank you for the, the uplifting, the inspiration you give by loving your neighbor and helping people during this trying time. Of course, I continue our prayers for those that are battling this virus out there on the front line. And Lord, be with them and keep them strong. Give them peace, O oh God. And again, O oh God, inspire them through the power and grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, we lift up many to you in name. We lift up families to you in name. Lord, uh, we ask that you be with all of these, all these families in their time of need and the various battles that they're going through, uh, from loss to illness, from, from other things that maybe cannot be spoken. Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you hear our prayers this day. Oh God, we, we pray and we pray hard for all of our neighbors around the world that are experiencing many of the same things that we're experiencing here in our country. And God, I ask that they feel your love and grace as well. Lord, be with them and keep them strong, keep them safe. Lord, I pray for our community of Tewksbury and may we continue to rise to this occasion and trot forward on. Lord, let us feel your grace and wonder. And again, oh God, help, help this church be out there for its community where you have planted us to serve and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, we lift our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. And now our closing hymn will be hymn number 346. It's called, O Come to Me, the Master Said. Remember, church out there in the cloud, to send us uh, all the blessings that are happening in our community. I want to remind you to share with your friends and your neighbors that the Tewksbury Food Pantry is there for our community. So, uh, again, please uh, share all the good things happening out there. Our closing prayer this morning is actually a hymn, 492, Spirit of the Living God. Let us pray. Spirit of the Living God, Fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. 
Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, move among us all. Make us one in heart and mind. Make us one in love. Humble, caring, selfless, sharing. Spirit of the living God, fill our lives with love. Now let us go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.